us a question or an issue. Well, thank you for record the session's being recorded now. Uh, but uh, we we start out by saying if anybody has a question or some something they particularly would like covered in this uh, this evening's webinar uh, or an issue that's completely off topic, you've got a minute to uh, you've got a couple of minutes and um, we will uh, address that. If anybody has any uh, pressing issues or some wonderful news or anything that they'd like to share with the room. Hearing nothing, I'd like to uh, go on and, uh, oh yes, go ahead, Gabriel, you're on. I uh, have had a guy that I've been dating for a year and we officially became boyfriends on Sunday, so yay. Yay, congratulations. Oh, look beautiful. <laughs> yay, how exciting. Uh, we're actually uh, on the uh, 17th of uh, May, uh, my uh, unc my uh, cousin, who's been my confidant since I was 15. He's 12 years older than I am. And he's uh, uh, part of, very active in the gay community in San Francisco, and he's getting married to his, uh, to his partner of about 12 or 14 years. And so uh, our entire family is going out to watch this uh, fabulous ceremony. And so I can certainly congratulate you on, uh, on declaring yourself to have a boyfriend. That works. Anybody else want to share anything? Okay, I'd like to go on then. Uh, we don't know a thing about this. And Let me do my thing. Oh, yes, do your thing. Okay, so we don't know a thing about this. <laughs> she was better coming from me. No, um, so I ride a motorcycle. I have boots and chaps, vests, belts, jackets, gloves, everything. And I will freely admit that I have never done a thing to my lovers. Um, at one biker rally, somebody won, uh, they did a little conditioning to my boot. I got on the motorcycle and nicked them right off and thought, well, why do I do this? So two years ago, we uh, attended a boot black um, workshop. workshop. It was a, a morning workshop, and then uh, she did a cigar service in the evening. And um, we attended that, and I learned how to care for my leathers, and I will admit that in those two years I've not done anything yet with that. Um, but, and I don't wear my leathers to conferences because they look crappy. But um, I never understood why, beyond making them look better, I would want to do anything with my leather, number one, or sit with a boot blast and have it done. So we decided we would learn. And then when we were at um, Sin, Sin in the City uh, earlier this year, uh, we saw a very, very hot, uh, uh, sensual uh, bootblacking scene where the, um, the, the bootblack had the, uh, uh, the uh, brush, brush in, in her mouth. mouth and she was swirling it around the can and uh, applying it to her master's uh, boot. And it was just, it was one of the most beautiful scenes I've ever seen of any kind. Just very impressed. Uh, so we're really looking forward to this evening. And, uh, and, and we can't ask questions because we don't know what well, questions to ask. So, uh, boy, Nick, uh, you seem, I, my, your senior uh, in here, uh, uh, would you like to introduce me? Would you like we have to, a lot of boot blacks in the world. Anybody want to take off and, and give us some, some context here? Help us out. Sure. Can you hear me? This is Nick. Yes. I do. Hello. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, Nick. <laughs> um, so you're asking me for a context on what? Well, talk, talk, how did you be, what drew you to boot blacking? It's a, it's a, it's a, a subculture unto itself, much the way. You know, I go around a lot. We're, I'm in a, I, I live in Master Slave, and we use, we're a part of the subculture in Master Slave that uses it for spiritual purposes. So I understand that you can use bootblacking for spiritual purposes, and I'm constantly having to explain how in the world you use Master Slave for spiritual purposes. So what, and I'm having to explain, what is Master Slave? How is that different than DS? 
So give us some orientation. You're, you, you guys uh, uh, have a lot of depth in an area where we're completely lost. Sure. Um, well, um, I would like to say that uh, probably at this point in time that um, Henry James, is, is he on the line? Yes, I am. Okay. He could probably provide us with more context on that because he's been doing it for a lot longer than I think any of us. Yep. Okay. Would you mind? I, I was happy. Yeah, I was happy not to be the most senior boot black on the phone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm out. Uh, th no, that's okay. Um, I joke I'm a super wuzzy. I've been doing this for a while. Um, I think the the way that I look at boot blacking, and I, I think the most translatable way to look at it is, it's a service rendered. Like many other services we do, um, where a slave may service their master, or a boy services their sir, or a girl, um, their, their mistress, whatever those formats are, bootblacking is one type of service. And in bootblacking, that, and like any service, the way that you do it depends on the connection between the two people. And sometimes I, like, I put the big umbrella term of intention. The intention that you have at that moment, you are focusing on that leather to communicate it to the person who's sitting in those letters. Now, sometimes that intention is, I am devoted and I am loyal and I am, I am yours. Sometimes that's, I love you. Sometimes that's like, hey, you're really hot and I want to get in your pants after we're done with this. Um, <laughs> it, it's about using that service as a vehicle to communicate intention. Um, and enjoying the experience and the, um, the cycle of energy that happens. And as a community, I'm going to say that boot blacking is very new. Um, only in the last even 10 years have we seen boot blacks become a community and become, have like their own identity. Um, you'll see them, the boot blacks run in packs a lot of times at conferences. Um, that's all a new, uh, component of boot blacks becoming their own identity saying I'm I'm you know I'm skills based I know a lot I I'm proud um, when you're a boot black it means that you love leather care and you love that whole process it does not mean that you're a bottom it doesn't mean that you have to be a submissive um, we know quite a few boot black tops um, I am on some days I am not on other days um, <laughs> you know so that kind of gives you a little bit of a vehicle for for most of us who boot black, it's about rendering a service and conveying an intention along a scope of things, and it's the connection of that boot black to the person that's in their chair or to that's standing there. And um, as boot blacks, we do we do everything. Um, we'll do your boots, we'll do your pants, we'll do your skirt, we'll do your corset. Um, I've seen somebody strip down to a jock strap and get their body done with no leather on it whatsoever. Um, we're equal really? opportunity boot blacks. Yeah, Hobbit. Does anybody surprise that? Uh, International Muscle Leather 2008 did that. Um, so that's kind of my introduction to what boot blacking is um, and, and what we do. But it, I think for me, the, the easiest way to define it is it's a service where you're conveying um, an intention, and that intention can differ depending on who you're playing with or who you're, you're servicing in your chair. Um, Nick, Jason, Tabitha, I, I, Gabe, want to add anything? Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like to add something to that. So um, part of my philosophy is that um, actually caring for somebody's leather is really just caring for them. Uh, and that's just kind of like an extra skin that they wear while you do that. Um, it may not be completely apparent to other people if they're watching that. Um, for me, that connection, like Henry said, the, the connection that I have with each individual, it can be different every time they get into the chair, too, even if I know them. Um, the connection that I have kind of determines what, how that progresses. Um, but for me, coming, I, you asked about how I got into bootblacking or how people got into bootblacking, too. I came at it from a military point of view. So I was brought up that essentially if your boots are in bad condition, that means that your feet ultimately will, you know, uh, be damaged if we need to move. And if you can't move, then you're dead. 
So ultimately, you know, caring for my own boots first was, was a priority. And later on, looking after other people's boots who didn't know how to do it very well was kind of a secondary thing. So for me, looking after your boots is actually, you know, looking after you. That, that's my experience, and that's how I came to it. There's other sexual things that get added in later, but, but that's where I started, and I think that's where my, my foundation of caring for somebody came from that, out of boot parking. Thank you. Gabriel has his hand up. Yeah, I had wanted to mention that uh, when Henry was talking about service, service to, it, it's not just service to the person in front of you, it, it can be a service to the entire community at large. You're servicing the, the history of life. If there's somebody that comes to you, do they want to completely repair and rejuvenate their, their piece of leather, or do they want to keep certain nicks and marks that are a history for them? So we talk about preserving leather history and actually preserving the leather in that history. Um, but there's also service to the community where you, many of us will be part of fundraising for travel funds and that sort of thing. So there's an, another yeah, yeah, yeah. level of service there. Didn't, didn't, didn't get it, Gabriel. Say, say it once more. See, let me try again. I was talking about how um, we provide service to the community, not just in the history of the letter, but we also serve, uh, provide a service when we do our fundraising. Many booth blacks will donate some of their tips to whatever the event is. And you know, in addition to that, we've serviced our community. Everybody wants to be around the booth black stand and walk. Everybody mm -hmm. wants to be able to to learn how to take care of their body. So there's multiple layers to the service that we're providing, even on just the physical level. Um, I, I would just make a side comment that um, I am uh, uh, surprised, without any loading on it positively or negatively, I am surprised at the number of people that are joining us tonight because of this topic. Uh, this topic, uh, it's either the topic or you as individuals, uh, uh, must be a heck of a draw. This is about twice the size of our normal uh, webinar uh, participant group. So you've got a lot of people interested. <laughs> well, I'd like to say something. Yes. This is Lake Tabitha. Oh. Um, See, I come from the spirituality and from a completely different end. Um, well, the way I got into boot blacking, it was actually my, my master got me into uh, boot blacking um, to kind of get me out of my shell. And um, even though she, it was her idea and she kind of pushed me into it, she basically said that, you know, this is yours and you can do what you want. You can do what you want with it. You can let it die or you can let it live. And I struggled with it, and I chose to make it grow. And my spirituality is that what I, I'm a slave, I always joke with my master, it's like I'm a slave to my master, but I'm a top to the boot, I'm a boot black top. Because when I boot black, it's where I get all of my power. Um, boot blacking has given me a voice in my community, and it gave me a place to where I could grind, where I could ground my feet. And it allowed me to grow within this community and grow as myself through boot blacking um, because it just basically gave me strength. Um, and when you're strong, you're able to do all those great things for your community and for other people. Um, but unless you're grounded on something that you can, you know, grab onto and be your own, um, it's hard to do that. Okay. Well, I will um, let Clay Tabitha know that mm -hmm. I, um, I'm investigating the spirituality and boot blacking, and I do a cert Google search, and I come up with the Leatherati um, on uh, Bam Bam, and uh, your name is mentioned, that you uh, were uh, the mentor, and um, it, I, I will read from this. It says um, that uh, you taught that there is no one true way uh, in this art, 
Uh, so here is the basic way it's done. Now do with it what you want. Make it yours. So that, that's telling me that every boot-black experience um, is going to be different. Oh, yeah. Totally different. <laughs> Talk to me about some of the hurdles that you, you've had to overcome in the process of either learning the skill or in the process of integrating within the community. Uh, we've got a couple of hands up. Uh, Jason the boy uh, was first, so go ahead, Jason, and then Gabriel. Jason, you're on. And Jason, you're on mute. Um, let me see. There okay, you go. Me. There he is. Thank <laughs> you. All right. So I am spiritually connected. I always talk about the boots being the foundation of my spiritual path that I walk. Um, it's what I stand on. It's what I stand in. It's what I stand with. Um, it's the things I believe in. I uh, I really like what Nick said. My father was an engineer for Ma Bell, and he taught me how to shine his shoes when I was little. And um, I come from the old school of you're only as good as your shoes are fine. You know, you're not complete until your shoes are done. And so that's kind of how I live my life. I live my life complete because I don't forget my shoes, right? Um, I like shiny things, not dull things. So I'm always the <laughs> shiny kid in the pack. Um, I'm the first boot black that will have their shoes shine when they hit their stand. Not all of us agree. Um, <laughs> but that's that's my calling card. That's my business card. How do you want what I have if you're not willing, if you don't like what what I see or what you see? So I know you were headed more on the spiritual connection. Go ahead. Say that again. You are the first boot black. What was that? Okay, so lots of boot blacks believe differently. The thing I believe in is that I never show up to the stands with my boots undone. There are some boot blacks that are way too busy to do their own stuff, which is true. It happens. We all get busy. But I will, you'll never see me in an undone pair of boots. They might be dirty from a day's work, but I can't do it. I can't be in them and then not be done. Okay. Thank so that's, you. That's kind of where I come from. Okay. Gabriel? Uh, if we're talking about where we came from as boot blacks, uh, it's all Henry's fault. <laughs> um, tell, me about that. tell me about the mentoring process then. Actually, it wasn't about mentoring so much as Henry was uh, was the beginning of my spiritual path in boot blacking, and it was the connection that I make to the people around me, and then I boot black. When I first met Henry, we spent a lot of time together. And in fact, uh, we met at one Southwest Leather Conference and then didn't speak to each other for an entire year when we went home. And then coming back uh, the next year, we, we really connected and made a good, deep friendship. And I was the interpreter, and I was like, I don't want to get my hands dirty. <laughs> But Henry was like, you've got to try the Hubbard. <laughs> and uh, I'll, I'll be honest, that the connection that I saw between Henry and the other boot blacks and, um, started me on my, uh, I don't even know the word I'm looking for, on my mission to create and grow intimacy in our community, in my life and everybody else's. When people sit in my chair, um, they get my full attention, and I connect with them. And if they can do that for 10 minutes with a stranger, then they can do that with someone else. And learning to open up or um, massaging those connections to help create them is what I live to do. That's what I do with my group life. Okay. I, I truly, I don't have, I don't know where to leave the conversation, so I leave it up to you guys. And Nick? Um, so I, I think if I, if I was to try and sum it up in one word, it would be connection. Um, 
and you know I know Henry alluded to this earlier about the different forms of that and how that goes, but I think in some ways we have a um we we sidestep some of the usual kind of introductions that happen in the leather community because people have kind of like a prescribed you know you're here this thing is actually going to happen it's kind of like you know it's almost ritualistic in a way in that you you show up as a beginning and an end and a deep in the middle and nobody ever quite knows where it's going to go but there's definitely a connection that happens um in in my own uh light way i like to say that boot blacking is like speed dating because you get uh you 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 know you get 15 20 minutes with somebody and you they either relax or they just want to sit there and do their own thing but you know you get to kind of see how people are when they're kind of letting their guard down a little bit and the longer it goes on the more they seem to open up um some people also joke that, you know, boot blacks are like uh, the priests of the leather community and that people will come and they'll tell you stories about their boots, they'll tell you stories about their leather, and you might be the only one hearing it, and you might be the only one that ever knows it, you know, but in my mind, that's kind of like a, it's it's, it's a really awesome way to connect with people. Okay. Henry, go ahead. Um, so, yeah, I often joke that we're the hairdressers of the leather community, and I mean that in the best way possible. Um, there's a moment in time in a crazy, you know, weekend or in a bar that's packed where two people get to sit in a bubble and have a conversation, and you never know where that conversation's going to go. And whether we're, we're hairdressers or bartenders or what it might be, you'd be surprised the stories that we hear because we're touching that leather and we're bringing it out. Am I there? Henry, Hello? we lost you. I hear him. Or did yeah, I can hear um, him. I'm here. Okay. Okay. Am I back? You're back, yes. The last thing you said was that uh, in a crowded bar, very few people get in to you, you get to sort of exist in a bubble where you and then, then we lost you, you dropped. And you never know where that conversation in that bubble, in that crazy chaos might go. Um, I, I actually had a man break down crying in my chair once. And I kept doing his boots and I let him cry. And he admitted to me that his partner had died a week before. And these were the first time that he had worn these boots out to the bar. And he had worn them and me doing them just brought up all this emotion for him. And, we, and I, I cried with him. You – and – you never know what you're going to touch in someone, um, and it's an amazing place to be. Uh, we hear stories. We get to mentor, um, and I, I think that a lot of boot blacking is it, it's there are multiple skills involved. And you had asked about, um, you know, where did we learn? Where 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 did we you know our mentors or who got us started? Um, and I don't know about the first boot black probably back there with the first wheel, but I know that my journey started because someone saw that I was into boots and said, have you met Boot Pig? And I said, who is this Boot Pig? Yeah. And, right. And when I met her and I looked at what she was doing and she was so excited about it and I thought, oh, I can be excited about this too. I'm a geek. I don't know where I fit, but I like boots. And I did the whole, may I apprentice under you? And in the course of learning to be a boot black, I also learned what it was like to be a leather boy and to be exposed to a completely different leather tradition. And I think a lot of us, when we come to boot blacking, we, we come with one thing and we leave with 10 things or an infinite thing. And we go to events and we may do a pair of boots, but you know, the thing that I love about boot blacks is there'll be four chairs and I'll be like, I have never seen this before. And somebody will lean over and go, you should use Obanoffs on that. Here's a can. Go for it. <laughs> you know, that spirit of boot blacking is 
It's between the boot blacks. It's between all the peoples in the chair. There, there's never a point where, as a boot black, you can say, I've learned everything. Because there'll be something new to learn. And, it, and that keeps it fresh and amazing and always an active journey. And hijinks always ensue. And we do tend to breed other boot blacks. Because, like Gabriel had said, the boot black energy is infectious. And people want to have their boots done, but other people want to learn to do boots. And it, it just becomes a really special area. Not everybody calls that spirituality, but I think a lot of people do find a spiritual practice in it. It's meditative. It's connective. Um, and as Nick said, one of my favorite words, it's ritualistic. There is a prescribed start and stop. What happens in the middle becomes that much more sacred and special because you have that running ritual. So just some, some points. But many of us actually went to an event, met somebody really cool who was a boot black and said, will you teach me how to do this? Um, and we might have had it in our past. You know, Somebody taught us to be a shoe shine or to shine our shoes. But that step to become a boot black is really about that energy exchange and things of that nature. Thank you very much. Gabriel, you were next, and then Nick. Gabriel, you, you've taken your hand down, but you wore up. And now I'm unmuted, too. Wow. I, uh, I wanted to speak to Henry's uh, statement about the, the cooperation and the spirit of, like, oh, I haven't seen that. You should use Obanov. Here's a can. I recall while I was competing for International Community Boot Black that somebody needed something that they didn't bring in their kit. And three different people were able to bring forth whatever it was and say, here's mine. And they were people that were competing. Yeah. So that, was, that says a lot for me about um, a spirit of cooperation and something that you, you're not going to get at your place of business or while you're out shopping or driving your car or whatever, you're not going to get the, the people that are going to walk up and want to see you succeed and make you, you know, do everything they can to make you succeed. And um, we've also been called, you know, we've been called a lot of things, freaks and um, geeks, but we've also been called the track boys of the leather community. Because if something's missing or something's in the wrong place, <laughs> you're going to have to go look at the boot, the boot black to find it. Thank you. Nick? To the, um, to the community side of things, is, well, for the most part, uh, yes, there are a couple of uh, people who are um, maybe a bit grumpy when they get to the boot stands or something, but... For the most part, there's there's a very positive energy that kind of goes along with, especially when boot blacks get together at boot stands, which is what Henry was talking about with this infectious quality. Um, everybody wants to just kind of hang around there, even if they don't get their boots done or their leather done, because they just want to be in that kind of positive space. Oh, you know? uh, yeah. You've heard that too, huh, Henry? <laughs> You've seen it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, it helps we're all really cute, too. <laughs> <laughs> it helps, but I, I think, you know, people know that we're the one to provide service, we're there to provide, you know, we're not professionals, but we somewhat provide counseling, we provide massage, you know, we provide a safe space. Occasionally, we'll provide chocolate cake. You know, and, and, and it's all right there, and people just need to come and sit with us and just, you know, to be in that space. Um, it is, uh, you know, it can be meditative, it can be all kinds of things, but I almost want to say that the boot black lounges are kind of like the, you know, Henry said, the hairdressers, the head, the salons, you know, where people just get to sit and hang out and chat and do whatever it is that they want to do. Do I have a, I have a question? Do you, when, when all of you guys are, are you, you all have lots of experience using different kinds of polish and different approaches 
to uh, uh, the care, the leather care, do you ever reach consensus that there is generally the best prep and generally the best polish? No. <laughs> I mean, what I've always noticed, yeah. What I've always noticed when you have a group of boot blacks together, they really never talk about products or they talk about the experience of being a boot black more than it is like talking about a process or talking about a product. Um, we talk about experiences and we talk about other boot blacks and what hot scenes they did. Because um, every boot black boot blacks differently. You know, my, it's just like my kink is not your kink. Same thing with boot blacking. Yeah. Henry? Yeah, um, I was going to add to that. It's also regional. Um, you know, uh, several yeah. of us lived in a very hot climate. Um, Tabitha, I'm, I'm actually from the Phoenix area. So, um, and I know Tabitha and Jason from eons gone by, as well as Nick. Um, and I was always taught, don't use mink oil or anything that has an animal fat in it, because in 120 degree Phoenix heat, your boots can turn rancid because they'll rot. Okay. Um, right. So, but I went back east and everybody <laughs> used mink oil and they've been using it since the dawn of time and they thought I was crazy. They also taught me how to use vinegar and strip salt off boots, which is something I never had to do in Arizona, but something the boot blacks <laughs> in the East Coast did. Um, when I met my boot blacks from Canada the first time, they didn't know what Hubbard's was and they lived and died by Lincoln, which is a specific kind of polish. We found out they couldn't import Hubbards. We've since then fixed that. We sneak Hubbards across the border all the time. Um, and they didn't get <laughs> other products. Um, I love a, boot pla uh, a shoe polish that's out of L.A., whereas people on the East Coast have never seen Angeles. So the, the thing that I, I would imagine is there are certain things that we say you shouldn't do unless you really know what to do. But for every rule that we've made, there's an exception. Somebody's broken it. Um, and my running joke is, ask five boot blacks a question, you'll get ten answers. Okay. It, it's just, it's the chemistry of your body. It's the products that you have available to you. It's how you like to apply them. Um, I know one guy who licks his brush. If I licked my brush, he'd take me to the hospital. I'm allergic to horse hair. Everybody does something for a different reason, um, which I, I think is brush. what makes us so fun. Yeah. No, no, please don't take me to the hospital. <laughs> so, um, and, you know, quite a few of us are from, have lived in that hot southwest climate. I know that, um, Nick, you probably had to learn some new things going up to Portland, right? Or is it a lot like England? May I ask, just as a, a, we have a little brief, brief pause in here, can I ask everybody who is not speaking to mute your mic? We're getting feedback and a lot of background uh, noise. Thank you very much. Go ahead now. So I, I guess that, that just to tie that together. Um, okay, we got it. Okay. That's why there's so many different things that we all sit in a group and talk about. And we will talk about any of a number of things. Um, we talk about types of leather. We talk about types of product. We talk about how we do it. Um, there are very few cardinal sins in boot blacking. There are a few, um, but there's not very many of them. Um, and I think what Tabitha said is true. We, we all like to share our special thing. Um, like, Nick is well known for being the, the king of laces. He can lace a boot pretty much any way you could ever expect. Um, everybody has their flair. I, I can do pretty much anything you want with a can of Hubbard's. Um, and you develop that personality as a boot black over time. Anybody else want to add? Well, I have a question. Uh, and then uh, um, uh, J Jason had his... Has, has, has her hand up, but I just wanted to ask. I've seen uh, a boot blacking session where we blacked his tongue and then licked the boot, and then I've heard that you could only do that with certain kinds of boot black uh, with boot polish. What, what's, can you talk to me a little about that? Uh, until somebody cuts me off, um, if you could do that 
enough. Go for it, Jason. Please don't make me answer this question. <laughs> I don't like to get dirty. <laughs> You don't need to get there, and I don't lick boots, although I'll deep throat um, a heel in a heartbeat. Um, but I'm not a, I'm not a boot-licking fan, and I don't like the oil of my mouth to get in the way of my polish. So for me, I wouldn't mix the two. But again, we talk a lot about how different each and every single one of us is and how we approach things. Um, some people can lick a boot all day. Um, that's like fucking, that's very intimate. I'm going to keep that at home in my bedroom because that's where I choose to keep that. Although I didn't expect those Louis Vuittons in my chair and they were Louis Vuittons. You have to suck on those heels. It's, it's, it's got to be a cardinal rule. It has to be. So, I mean, that's where I, I broke one of my rules. I, you, you know, there's certain things I don't, don't do myself. How do that now? Um, but also the kit that I play. When I was interviewed at one of the contests that I competed in, I they asked, do you play? And I said, no, I don't play. And if anybody knows me, I play a lot. <laughs> and I have lots of fun. And I'm the energy energizer bunny. I run at 90 to nothing the entire time I'm at an event. Um, it's what I love to do. It, it's what fills my soul. And, and I'm, I'm one of those energy suckers. I can pull energy out of a crowd in a minute. And I love it, and I feed on it. I also have a good time when it comes to, to boot, but it, it is. It's very reasonable. Um, plus, half of us are Caucasian. Half of us are Angeles fans. Um, some of us are shiny, some of us aren't. Um, and what's funny about what Gabe had said, the boot black that came to my area and taught a boot blacking class was Henry James. Him and Izzy came down and taught a class. Pat Bailey brought them in. And um, it was amazing. And it was an amazing event. And I got hooked right away. And, um, and uh, Henry always also talks about the energy exchange and being a boot black or a shoe shine. Well, I'm a shoe shine in a cigar bar. As a matter of fact, the owner of my cigar bar is transitioning, which I didn't expect. He's a cop. I didn't expect it to happen. Or she is now an amazing woman, or becoming an amazing woman. But everything happens for a reason or a purpose. And the only thing I find different about shining shoes and being a boot black is that clothing is not optional in the cigar bar. You have to have clothing on. Other than that, as a boot black, clothing is optional. Hmm. Okay. Nick, you had your hand up. Um, yeah, I'm, um, we, we talked about licking boots. Uh, I normally, you, you asked a specific question there. Generally for me, if I have cleaned the boot first, then I'm happy to, to lick it afterwards. And generally if I find out that the person is a, a virgin in the chair, like they have never done that, had their boots done before, then I will, usually I will ask them if they would like their boot licked. You know, I'm kind of spoiling them for future boot blacking, I guess, maybe a little bit. But, you know, I'm, I'm giving them as, as much of an experience of boot blacking as possible without it being, you know, like some kind of, you know, I'm not guaranteeing any kind of sexual activity afterwards, but I can at least introduce them to how it can be at, um, if they're into it. Sometimes they're a little embarrassed and don't really want to, but. For the, for the brave few, they really like it, and um, I don't know if they ask other people to lick that boots afterwards. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, Ursula asked a question uh, that uh, I'd like to repeat and, and see if we can. Uh, it seems like an interesting topic. The question is, what are some of the sins in the boot blacking world? Um, this is Henry. I just kind of responded. Well, oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, a lot of us do play with our boots, and when we say play, um, those boots go into intimate places, um, mouth, crotch, and who knows. Um, and so if some, we tend to all have a standard of using non-toxic um, type products, or at least where we can, because 
you somebody may go to an event and have one boot black do their boots and then go to another event and the next boot black will lick those boots. And if you use something like mop and glow, um, which are secrets or tricks in the military, um, you can make another individual very sick. Um, the, the base one is 99% of the time you don't put polish, which is a wax coating, on an oil boot. You put an oil on an oil boot. And you very seldom put oil on a polish boot. Um, so there are not a whole lot of cardinal sins, um, but there are some things that we don't do because they're not healthy for the boots or they're not healthy for the next boot black and line. Um, so that, that would be kind of the way I would summarize that. Um, don't know if anybody has more to add on that. I think one of the cardinal sins is when you've had, when you're in maybe with a boot, you're in a boot black scene, you're doing it with somebody, and somebody comes up and interrupts you. Um, I think a lot of, you know, in some scenes, like, a, you know, I'll, I'm very social when I'm boot blacking, so I'll talk to a lot of people, but a lot of, a lot of times you can actually get very intense scenes. It's like playing. It's like being flogged. It's buying, it's like being hit with a single tail. You don't walk up to a boot black scene and start talking to either one of them. Um, so I think you, I think spectators have got to be conscious that, that, you know, it is a scene and just be respectful of that. I, I have to admit that I had uh, no idea and um, will do my best to get that word out. Um, especially when you guys were talking about a beginning, a middle, and an end that spoke to me as a recognizing that this is a scene. So, um, so we, um, Nikita and Ursula asked about the sins. I, I wanted to ask, um, so I sit in, in a boot black chair for my first ever uh, experience. Generally, what can I expect? A fun time. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully your, your boots come away or, you know, your leather comes away looking better than it did when you walked in. And hopefully you do too. If it's the first um, time you're in my chair, I'm going to scream cherry in chair. Yeah, That's yeah, cherry pop, cherry pop. <laughs> yeah, I would have to lick your boots. I mean, there, there's a moment where, much like, um, and I, I keep going back to the hairdresser metaphor, but when you sit down in a barber chair in a hairdresser chair, they look at you and they say, so what would you like done today? We do the same thing. If um, you sit down in a chair, I'll look at your boots and I'll say, hey, Looks like maybe these haven't ever been done before. Is this your first time, or when was the last time these got done? And I actually will kind of mini-interview you. And in that moment, we're negotiating. We're negotiating for what I'm going to do next. Um, and there are times where if I have really good energy with somebody in that chair, or I've known them before, I may say to them, hey, is there anything off limits? Or can I have a good uh, – can I just let go? And – you know, sometimes lady yes, sometimes like, oh, no, I'm, I'm in caller this weekend and I can't do that, but thank you. You know, you're negotiating for that brief couple of minutes before we, you know, open up the soap and start cleaning the boot and then start doing what we're going to do. Um, so if you ever sit in a boot black chair and the boot black doesn't ask you what you've done, what done with your boots, I don't care what position in any hierarchy you're in. At that moment, you have a right to say, by the way, this is what I would like done, or this is what I was thinking. Engage them, because that's your moment of negotiation, and every boot black should do that. Okay. Um, well, I've got some questions, though, to you uh, before calling on any of the others. Uh, I, we're so naive. Um, you, you're negotiating. What are, what are the options? So you're saying, I'm getting the sense that there's a continuum. One is evidently you sort of do a basic uh, cleaning and then a basic uh, uh, polishing. But what do you mean go just really get into it and do your own thing? What are some of the what what are the what are the range of options here that the that the person wearing the boot has? What would what would somebody typically ask you for or maybe be afraid to ask you for? <laughs> well, I think a lot of I think a lot of people who get in the chair. First of all, a boot black's going to ask them if they've ever done it. You know, what have they done to the boots in the past? Um, you, some people are very emotionally connected to their boots, so they're going to like know exactly what they want done to their boots. 
some of them will get up there and go, you know, I haven't got these things polished for 20 years. Do what you want to do to them. Um, a lot of, you know, it, the boot blacks can range from being a very technical boot black who basically just do the shine and they get enjoyment from that to a purely sexual boot black where, you know, if, if there's a negotiated scene and that person wants to have some fun and it's negotiated, they're going to go for it. Um, so it's, it's a wide range of boot blacks. What's your favorite so specifically? Answer? Yeah, I mean, I have I have been known to put hubbards on my cheeks and apply boot grease to the boot with my the cheeks of my face. I do not do this for just anybody, and I would not do it if I did not ask if it was appropriate. That's kind of more that play side, but you get us in that little conversation that happens before you get to know the boot black a little bit. The boot black gets to know the person in their chair, and and it's like any negotiation and as you're going you're kind of feeling things out you know i i've i've seen nick do this but you know if you're rubbing on somebody's ankle and they start to squirm and their eyes roll back in their head you're going to keep doing that a little bit more maybe you're going to rub a little deeper you read what's going on in the scene and the energy builds and and that's part of the whole process um and and frankly those of us who do it love it and we we love to make people squirm in our chair in all the good ways and um you know, the boot black will – a good boot black, and pretty much any boot black, um, will kind of lead you in the right direction. So if you don't know where you're going and you say, look, I don't know where I'm going, what would you do? You can have that conversation before they start. And it's okay to say, hey, I don't know anything, but this looks really interesting. Um, walk me through what you're doing. Um, a good boot black will, will tell you what their steps are that they're doing um, because they're interested to share with you what they do because they love it. So if somebody wants to sit there and learn, whoo-hoo, that's like they're in my chair, they're captured, and I can share my story and share what I do. And I think all of that's part of the boot blacking process. And I think it's the difference between us and a shoe shine. We really want that interconnection. Um, the, the, the products and the boot and the leather are kind of an avenue to it. This is really very, very helpful. I've, uh, I've never uh, really understood what was going on uh, with the uh, boot black stands, and uh, I don't think I've had my boots black more than once or twice, and it's certainly been, uh, uh, it's been five or six years since I have. It's just not anything I ever did, but after this discussion, I'll do this as a matter of course. This is just marvelous. <laughs> I've never never occurred to me that it's that it was a form of social interaction. But I'm an ass. I have Asperger syndrome, so this it, sometimes you have to hit me over the head with a two by four. But I feel like I need. It's like having. It's like cleaning the house before the maid comes. I feel like I have to do something to my boots before I sit down. No, no. Be never show up with clean boots. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do. And that, that's the, that's the one thing I hate when the people sh when people come in and go and I'm sorry my boots are dirty you have to clean you have to work on dirty boots I'm like what's the fun in cleaning a new you know having a new, you know what's the what's the fun in cleaning washing a new car you know okay yeah. and okay. it's not just your boots I mean I'm gonna say I love doing pants I like doing shirts some of the hottest scenes I had was actually doing somebody's leather shirt um. That got out of hand quick, and it was great. Um, we, we tell people that we can do you from top to bottom. If you've got leather on, and it's a piece of leather, nine times out of ten, we can condition that, clean it, and help you maintain it. Um, so don't just go with your boots. Think about if you own pants or chaps. And I know not everybody wears leather, um, but if you haven't, try, try it. It's, it's good. And getting a boot black chair with lots of it on, it gets better. <laughs> And, uh, I think corsets are hot, done or undone. They're they're a lot of fun. Skirts, brassieres. I like jocks too, though. I'm 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 a hoe. Well, I it's it's almost like I need to um, have three different outfits for three different days. <laughs> for three different boot blacks, we're there. For three different boot blacks, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, please come and sit for us. Yeah, oh, I knew. My new thing, my new thing is that I discovered I'm a boot black voyeur. I love 
having my master get her boots done by another boot black and me watching. It's the okay. weirdest thing. I love it. <laughs> Jason, Jason did my master at Southwest. And I was like, hey. Wet. <laughs> hey <stop it. laughs> uh, a, rock, a rock has his hand up and he's been anxious. He's had it up for a while. So uh, I, I, don't, I don't want to kill the conversation, but I don't want to miss a rock's question either. Good afternoon. Good evening. Um, I, the first time I was uh, ever had the honor to sit for a blue black was with uh, Jason. Um, uh, I was uh, asked to do uh, the music for a, uh, a blue black ball, um, uh, and uh, she was able to do my uh, jacket that I got and uh, uh, my boots, if I remember correctly. Um, and I, it was so obvious to me that what you are doing is you are going to someone who has copious knowledge on how to serve you in the best way possible. And just as if you are going to a, an artist and saying, I want you to make a chair for me, you would ask them, I don't know how to do this. Tell me. Tell me what you can do and um, allow them to show you their art, and it is an art. Uh, it's one of the few places where someone can uh, meticulously serve you, other than sexually, but um, uh, meticulously serve you directly on your body. And it is a uh, uh, magical experience for which I am very, very grateful. Thank you, Jason. Unless Jason's going to reply, Gabriel has his hand up. Go, Gabe. Okay, so one of the things that you can expect to speak to that when you sit in my chair is I'm going to ask you to take off a piece of your clothing. And guys that are straight and have never considered looking at another man will take off their shirt for me or take off their pants and let me sit in, in just their jock strap. And although my hands are going to roam, I'm going to respect that they stretch their boundaries for me. The second thing you're going to have to expect is that I'm going to put my hands on you. You're going to feel the coolness of water. Avery, we've lost you. And am I back? I still hear him completely. Yeah, okay, I can hear you, Gabe. You're fine. Okay. So better go can, out of somebody else. I don't hear you at all, Gabriel. Okay, everybody else hears me. So Bob, um, can you hear the rest of us? Maybe we're the one who's gone away. Can we? Can you hear me? If if you can hear me, would you put a one in the chat room box? Yeah. Again, maybe if people are uh, are not speaking, they could put their microphones on mute so that we can just have the one audio thing. Can you hear me? I can. Yes, we can. Okay. All right, then go ahead. I, we were worried that we had lost. Uh, okay, good. All right, thanks. Okay. We were worried that we lost. I talked about getting people to get naked in my chair. And <laughs> Also, that you can expect me to put my hands on you and the sensations you're going to feel. It, you're going to feel the coolness of water when I spray to wash, and you're going to feel the pressure of my hands as I wipe things down. You're going to feel warmth when I uh, melt the polish in my hands by making it nice and warm. You're going to feel all these things, and if you believe at all in any kind of reflexology, the places that I'm touching on your body below your knee are going to affect you throughout your your body. It's amazing. So those are the things that you can expect, at least in my case. So um, what I'm getting is the answer to the spirituality of boot blacking is the connection. Um, and so 
you know you, you walk away from that experiencing experience knowing that something different has happened. Go ahead, Gabriel. Yes, I would say that indeed that and it's the connection between you and the person that you're is in your chair. It's the connection between you and the other boot blacks that are around you that precede you and go after you. It's the the line of people that are waiting to sign up. There's a connection, a variety of them, and uh, for me at least, the spirituality is uh, finding a place and improving that connection. Nick? There's definitely, a, to add to that, I want to say there's a, it's, it's a safe space for connection as well. Um, I know a lot of people try and connect with others through, you know, a sexual element of things, you know, in the rest of their lives and sometimes find that to be, you know, a little empty and, you know, it's great in the moment, but then afterwards it's kind of, you know, flat or, you know, not very fulfilling. But where bootlacking is concerned, I think you you can have that kind of a connection with somebody without having to go through that kind of act or without the letdown afterwards. And it, it, it's a very, it, it's, it, it's like a kind of safer sex in a way in that you get to connect with people, you touch each other, um, you, you bond with each other, you may bond with other people around you as well and kind of get a group thing going on too. But at the end of the day, you kind of go away from that with, you know, feeling maybe a little bit better or happier about yourself. And certainly your leather should also be looking a lot better too. And you can kind of take that energy with you as a positive connection that you just made with everybody. So I, I like to say it's kind of like a safer sex experience, but no letdown. Experiences uh, and negative experiences where you were uh, uh, where you were uh, working on somebody's boots and something happened, somebody that came in from the outside or where the experience turned negative. Drunk in your chair. That's, that's the worst thing that's ever happened. I drunk sat in my chair and I couldn't get any kind of connection with him. He was just a jerk. Okay. Henry? Um, I had a, a daddy for a while who had, um, if anybody understands these, 17-inch uh, knee-high um, Nautilus West Coast um, that required every <laughs> time that they be polished in the bar that I had to use a um, use fire on them and a mini blowtorch and melt the polish. They're incredibly technical, incredibly difficult, um, and they were something that we would do towards the end of the night at the bar every Friday when I bootlacked. And some drunk guy who thought my daddy was really hot and could care less that I was doing the boots, as I finished and the polish was still wet, came over and put his hand on his boots and said, oh, these are really hot. At which point my daddy turned to him and said, you need to leave the bar now before this boy kills you. <laughs> and it was a combination of interrupting a scene and touching someone's boots without permission and then ruining, by the way, what took an hour to polish and required that I do them all over again because they were still wet and now they had his oil and fingerprints and all kinds of things in them. So um, that's probably my worst experience um, with just people not understanding what's going on and inserting themselves um, into your boot blacking. Um, and, then, you know, we always say boot black shouldn't be rude to the customers, but customers need to also – not be rude to the bootlegs. Um And uh, there are times that you spend an hour on a pair of somebody's high shines and they, they give you a dollar. And it, you know, and you're giving half that money to charity and it becomes really difficult. And um, we'll probably get on the, the topic of tipping now that I've said that. But um, it's, it's hard. You want people to value what you do. And so when you do a really good job and then someone gives you, you know, a minimal tip, um, with no understand, no explanation, it, it that can also be really hard to bear. It's like what I wasn't good enough, um, and it's different if the person says, "Hey, I've only got a couple of dollars in my wallet, but I really want to get my boots done." You know that when you get in. Um, so, mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Well, um, Those, what is your, your swipe thing on the, for the phone? Uh, oh, the square? So, yeah, get square so you can take credit cards. I never have cash. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have one. <laughs> I, I just always, uh, my assumption always was that at a conference, the appropriate donation was $20. And I think I it's no important to, that, <laughs> right, it depends, but I also think it's important to note that a lot of times a boot black at a conference or at a weekend event is splitting whatever they make to cover the cost of their supplies and their travel with the travel fund or the charity or whatever it might be. So when you enter an event, tipping the little heavy is a nice thing. It means that everybody gets to go home with a little bit more. Okay. You know, when, when, I, when I boot black, I never set a price. I always say anywhere between five and a million. If you could do closer to a million, that'd be great. <laughs> then Kitty. Okay. Kitty, did you have a question? I saw what you – Kitty had written on here. Um, actually, it was uh, Ree that wrote, since I have a hard time with service due to health issues, we have certain rituals with boot blacking. If I'm at home either doing it alone or uh, with Mike's feet uh, in the boots or wearing his uh, his – cut, whatever, uh, I'm naked, it's just a reminder of what I am, even if I'm struggling that day, uh, even just to walk. Okay, thank you. Actually, yes, sir, I did have a question. Um, the, the community that I am is extremely um, new in, in, the realm of having a boot black um, and trying to get people just to understand that they can come to where I am. We, we actually have a boot blacking stand now, which is just incredible. But um, they're actually beginning to see now after four months of sitting at the stand every Friday night, that they can actually come and get their leathers done. But I don't have any idea how to get across to the community at large that you're actually real, it's polite to tip. Do you have any suggestions for a polite way to encourage that? A sign. A sign, yes. That's that's what uh, Gabriel's written down here. Uh, put up a sign. They have a tip jar. A tip jar, a tip jar with a suggested amount would be helpful. Uh, for some of us that are just clueless, uh, a sign would, be, would certainly be fine. I did signs for Sin in the City that everybody said was really helpful about etiquette and information and that kind of stuff. And I will tell you from personal experience, teaching your own community is, is it's a work in progress. Um, I've been the bar, I've been the boot black in my community for, um, I don't know, quite close to five years now. And it, it's been a work in progress. And I continue talking about tipping. I continue to talk about the funds that I, that I donate. I can, I always have a specific charity I donate to. I talk about that. I talk about that in my advertisement. I talk about that. I just had an amazing experience at uh, an event we just had this weekend called Spring Pant. Um, I was the only boot black on property, um, which happens a lot in Albuquerque. It's a small city. Um, and so with that, I was doing, um, I was raising funds for Leslie Anderson and her preservation of leather project uh, for L-A-N-M. And uh, with that, I had an opportunity to raise $600 in a weekend. So it was amazing. And I gave away all my tips. I did a boots and cigar party as well. So. Um, it's, it's, Kitty, it's a work in progress. Don't give up on the hope. Don't give up on the dream. Don't give up on the information. I can also say from my experience that, um, yeah, tip, a tip jar to have some kind of information there or a sign is great. But ultimately, I think it, to, to really educate your community, if they're not coming over and even looking at what you're doing, um, uh, getting somebody into your stand to begin with at the beginning of a night can really help other people understand that you're there to do the leather care. Usually if, if, things look, if, if, if things look a little slow, um, we call it having your starter pair. 
where you, you grab somebody and say, hey, you want to come and, you know, get your boots done or your leather done? Um, you know, I won't, you know, I'm not asking for anything for it, but this just helps other people understand that I'm here to do these kind of services. And ultimately, you may just be having one conversation at a time with people when they understand that you're there to do that, and then you'll start getting repeat people coming back to get their 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 leathers cared for um, that way. And when they see also other people, when they see tipping happening, that's when they'll understand that, oh, okay, then maybe there's like some kind of exchange that could happen here. And that's negotiable on the way in, like Henry said. If they don't know or they don't have anything, it's like you could negotiate for other things too. It's not, you know, but it's, it's definitely about trying to respect each other's time. Um, questions come up uh, uh, about how long these uh, this session is going to continue, and I know Matt has a couple of questions right now. I just thought I'd address that. Uh, starting at the first of this year, we've expanded them from being exactly an hour long to being roughly an hour long. It sort of goes on uh, as long as there's this kind of interest. So if somebody had planned this only to be an hour, then certainly feel free to leave and we understand that. Um, what had happened was that uh, uh, that uh, we have gone from uh, sitting around a dinner table and eating, and I wanted to limit that to an hour, to being more open-ended because we're now sitting on a couch. So uh, again, uh, if you uh, feel that you need to leave, uh, you're welcome to do so. And otherwise, we've got such interest going on here in such a large group. Uh, and my God, uh, you, the presenters here are so spectacular that I'd like to take advantage of it a little longer, just really for selfish reasons, if you don't mind. Go ahead, Pastor. I had um, uh, a point and a, um, a question. The point is, uh, we have a book that is uh, going to be printed this year um, basically, the, the beginning information for coming into the lifestyle, going to parties and such, and I would like to include it, include in that the etiquette of bootlacking, because some of the things that we talked about tonight, recognizing that it's a scene and so forth, I think are important things to get out um, in, in this type of a forum. So for um, uh, anybody that has Bob's address and way of getting this kind of information to us, this book is in final edit. So it, it, it's something that we need to get going pretty soon yeah. if we can get that to us. Actually, let, let me even make this a little uh, more clear. Uh, it, it, it's entitled, uh, t tentatively titled, Getting Your Kink On, uh, Your Guide to Play Parties and uh, BDSM Relationships. And um, a number of people who are in this room have actually done pre-reads on it. Uh, and I'm working right now with Slave David Stein on it. So it's intended to be a, a serious look at, at the community. And it's different than other books that are out there because it looks at us. Uh, it's a sociological look. It's not a how to do this. It's a what in the world is this culture. So if there's anybody uh, particularly among uh, the the, the um, presenters, the bootblack presenters this evening, who would like to uh, help me develop a section uh, going into this, uh, I'd truly appreciate it. It's very important. Uh, and all of you know how to reach me, because uh, you wouldn't be on here without it. And, and now my controversial question, comma, statement, comma, observation. Um, it seemed to me that, that bootblacking was a uh, really geared towards men. and uh, you don't find very many women, and when you do, um, uh, it, it, it just seems like there are more men. Um, is this just my experience for looking, or is um, do you see more women coming in? Uh, help me out here. Should the old timer answer this question? <laughs> of course. Yep. <laughs> okay. So. The, the history of boot blacking is a fuzzy and moving thing. Um, what we know is that many times what is now considered a boot black was a boy um, who belonged, um, who was a boy to a man who belonged to the leather club 
and not all the, the sirs or the men in the club had somebody to take care of their leathers. And so that boy, they would get together and that boy would help the other men in the leather group take care of it. So it started from a, a leather SM kink perspective in the gay male motorcycle clubs, maintaining their motorcycle leathers. And then we've seen that evolve as we've gone less to motorcycles, but still loving those leathers, um, where I think it was a very boy thing um, and very male thing. And I can say that in the last five years, even, um, definitely, we're actually, we're starting to get close to 10 years. Wow, I really am old. Um, we have seen a massive rise in girls getting their boot black on. And when I say girls, I mean female-bodied people getting their boot black on. We've also seen a massive rise in um, it in the heterosexual kink space, not just in the gay and lesbian space. Um, boot blacking has become an equal opportunity thing. Um, in it wasn't historically, but now it is, and we're seeing titles that are um, International Miss Boot Black just had their 15 year anniversary, so they have 15 years of of growing female boot blacks and supporting them with an international title. Um, International Community Boot Black just had its tenure, and they're a, we don't care who you are or what you are at this moment, as long as you say you're a boot black, you can run. Um, so I think we're seeing a movement of female-bodied people boot blacking, but also really importantly, femme-identified people boot blacking. Um, and they are taking it by storm. Yeah. And we, um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to have to go here in a minute. I, I'm also at a work function, but just to, yep. to to give you some perspective here, I just got back from a, a boot blacking event up in um, Georgia, uh, in which it was kind of like a boot camp for new boot blacks. And just the demographics there, there were about 30 attendees, and maybe there were only two guys there. That's how much of a, a, a difference that like there are there are so much more uh, women boot blacks coming up and wanting to learn how to do it. Some of them just you know, for their partners, and some of them actually wanting to get into the community side of it and providing a service to the community. So I just wanted to let you know that probably where you are, maybe you're seeing more men, but if you go to other locations, you're probably likely to see a lot more women starting and coming in. And in fact, there is there is talk among the men that you know, we're a dwindling lot at this point, um, and that we're not quite sure how many new men are coming in because we're just seeing women all the time coming in, and it's great. So, woohoo! <laughs> um, but, but thank you for including me. I, I have to. I have to uh, sign off. So, thank you. you for making your time available tonight. That was really a treat that you could join us. Thanks so very, very much. And um, I would say if we have any questions um, before we give our boot blacks their um, the last, their last day. Does anybody have any questions? Real, real quickly. I apologize. I need to step out as well. My day starts at 4:30 in the morning, and mm -hmm. sleep is required when you do customer service for a living. Yes. Uh, love to all of you. Thank you for having this. This was amazing. It was thank just so lovely. Uh, thank you very much, Jason. It's just so nice for you to join us. Really appreciate it very much. Should we just shut it down here? Well, if anybody